All right, so you heard the exciting news. I am a full-time food blogger now. It feels like I've been waiting for this day for a lifetime. Oh my gosh, it feels like forever. Hey guys, welcome to The Foreign Fork. My name's Alexandria. This is The Foreign Fork, where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world. You can tell today already looks a little bit different, and today I'm sitting on my couch, so I wanted to kind of just take you through some exciting news that I have. I actually just transitioned for the foreign fork to be my full-time job. So I want to kind of go through the journey with you, kind of tell you what it looks like, just fill you in, um, tell you what's going on in my life. I've been getting lots of questions, so I have them written down. I'm gonna be answering these in the video. I'm gonna just make a video and take you through it. So keep on watching and we're gonna go through everything together. <music> In January of 2018 to June of 2018, I um, went to Europe and I lived in Italy for about four months. And then the last two months I backpacked uh, Europe. And over the course of that time from January until June, I visited 15 different countries. Um, and for the last two months of my trip, after I was done living in Italy, I actually backpacked alone. I was taking like night, 15 hour night buses in between countries um, and arriving in hostels and not knowing anybody. And so a fun way that I thought I could learn about the country and potentially meet people was taking cooking classes in the countries that I went to. So I always tried to kind of get like a taste of, of what that country, ah, no pun intended, but um, I guess pun intended. Learning about a country through the lens of food I think is really unique. Food is impacted by history, it's impacted by geography, by culture, by religion, by people. Um, it's just impacted by so much. After I finished my backpacking, it was time to come home and be a, a real adult and get a real job. So the same week that I started um, my first week at my full-time job, which was August of 2018, I also hit publish on my very first blog post. I just wanted something that I could do that felt like it was for me, something I could do on the side. I just like immediately started working 80 to 100 hours a week, which is insane, I know. I was working really hard at my job, my day job, sales. Um, and then I was also working really, really hard on my blog on the nights and weekends. And it was exhausting, but I loved it. I didn't mind. I mean, every once in a while I would feel burnout, but I was just like so excited and so happy to be doing this thing that I loved that I did not mind. And I was getting really, really good results at my day job. The problem was, was that I was working so hard during the day and seeing awesome results from that. And I was working so hard at night and nothing was happening. I was feeling really bummed. So I was about to give up on my food blog. I remember like crying in the kitchen to my dad and being like, this is, I'm working so hard. It's been over a year, nothing is happening. That week, literally, um, I got a message from a fellow food blogger congratulating me on my nomination for a 2019 Severe Blog Award for Most Groundbreaking Voice. The Severe Blog Awards are a big deal. It's like the Oscars for food bloggers. And I have no idea how I got nominated. I don't know who nominated me. I do now, um, cause she told me that she had nominated me, but um, I did not at the time. Um, that put some wind in my sails, made me feel like people were reading, people were watching. There was like 16,000 nominations for the Sever Awards. And out of 16,000, they picked my blog to be as a finalist. So regardless of if I won or didn't win, I did not care. I was like, oh my gosh, 16,000 nominations. They looked at every single blog and they picked mine out of everybody's like, what? And I actually won the um, Severe Blog Award. In February of 2020, I decided enough was enough. I was so sick of working for no pay. For those of you that don't know, one way to make really good passive income on a blog is to have um, work with an advertising agency. They put ads on your site and every single person that comes to your blog, when they read, they scroll past the ads and you get paid for every single person that visits your website that sees the ads. There's one ad agency called Mediavine that um, has a lower 
threshold than the other ones, um, but it's just as high quality. So Mediavine at the time was 25,000 sessions. I had like 7,000 sessions on my blog in February of 2020. And I was like, next month, I'm getting 25,000. I don't care. It's taken me a year and a half to get 7,000 and I'm gonna get an additional up to 25,000 in a rolling 30 days in March, done deal. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I didn't know, like, I just like said it out loud, announced it to my family, announced it on Facebook, told them the exact numbers I was working for and how crazy it was that I wanted to get it, but that I wanted to get it and um, start working on it. And in March of 2020, I published 31 pieces of content in 31 days. Wait, 30 days in September, April, June, and November, all the rest of the year. Yeah, 31. And I just like started sharing it like a mad woman. Um, I shared it on Facebook. I shared it on Instagram. I texted it to my family and was like, send this out in a group chat to everybody that you know. Um, and they did. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was like March 25th or something. I had hit 25,000 sessions in a rolling 30 days. I was so excited. I was jumping up and down. I was screaming. Um, I applied for Mediavine, got an email very shortly after that I got it. Since then, my blog traffic just skyrocketed, exploded, and it's still on its way up. So um, every month it grows, I make more money. It's wonderful. In February of 2021, I had to have the really hard conversation with my job. As much as I was so grateful for it, um, it was time for me to like pursue the thing that I was so passionate about that I loved so much. Um, I just moved into this beautiful apartment with Matt, the love of my life. Um, and now I get to do my blog as my full-time job. That's kind of the background. And I gave most of it in a 30 second explanation and a reels on Instagram. But if you wanted the extended version, you sure did get it. Let me go see my notes. Let me go see what I decided I was gonna talk about next. Okay, I'm back. Answer FAQs. So I guess that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, ah. <sighs> okay, hold on, hold on. Jeez, it's in the way. Okay, I think that's better. I put up a little question box and um, told people they could ask me whatever questions they wanted. So I wrote down my favorites and um, I figured I could answer them so that you could learn a little bit about food blogging. The first question is how do you make money food blogging? So making money blogging. So I talked a little bit about ads on your website and how you can make money from that. So every single person that visits your website, it's like literally pennies. Um, for every person that visits, but over the course of a month and how many people you have visiting that adds up. So that's one way. Um, another way is you can do sponsored posts, food brands that fit kind of well within both of our niches, an Instagram story or make a recipe that promotes their product. I do recipe development and photography for brands. I have brands that will send me product that they want me to do recipe development for, or they want me to take photos of. Um, and I will do that and it just goes on their website. It doesn't go on mine. So you don't know that I'm the one that's doing it, but I am making up those, um, recipes. Cooking classes. I'm gonna start getting more into cooking classes soon. You can sell a course. I don't do that. Another good way is YouTube. I haven't started monetizing my YouTube. I have a little bit further to go. Uh, but if you wanna watch this episode a couple times on repeat, that'll help me get a little bit closer. What helped me grow the most? I have found blogging is cyclical, right? You're gonna have a high month and then a low month and a high month and a low month and it's just gonna happen. I've also found that the higher the high months are, the higher they go the next time. So when I just like decided in March that I was just gonna like hit 25,000 sessions, um, I worked really, really hard at that. And the next month, like it went down, but it did not go down nearly as far as how low it had been prior to March. Um, and the next month when it went high, it was at like 40,000 people, um, which was a whole lot higher than 25,000 that I had before. This might be terrible advice. I don't know, but it worked for me. So I'm going to tell you anyway, I started focusing a lot on a ton of content and a ton of quality content. Now, many will argue, and I agree that if you're doing one post a day for 31 days, they're not all going to be high quality. And that is the truth. I think just like having enough content out there for people to click was really, really helpful. I remember it was like two o'clock in the morning and I'm like, typing like this with one eye open and Matt's like, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Don't give up. And he's like encouraging me. Torture 
don't recommend it, but it did give me a lot more content that I could share that people would then click on. And that's pretty much all I needed. Also sharing into Facebook groups. So I found some niche Facebook groups. Um, for example, I do a lot of Instant Pot recipes. So I found some Instant Pot groups. I shared my recipe into those in, into those every single day. Facebook groups are my favorite way to get traffic on my website because they don't work unless you work, if that makes sense. Like Google, once your post starts showing up on Google, people will click on it, whether you blogged that day or not. For Facebook groups, you have to share it every single day into a group. I could have like waited to just get that traffic organically, but I didn't want to wait. Why would I? The short answer. Lots of content, quality content, sharing into Facebook groups. I think those are probably the three biggest things. Yeah. What did I do to get here? Uh, so we already talked about traffic and about how I grew my traffic. That was a really big thing that I did to get here. So watch that last section. That's what I did. Um, but also I started getting um, some recurring partnerships with brands that helped me too. Those helped me feel a lot more confident um, quitting my job because I knew, again, traffic is cyclical. It also felt good knowing that I had like recurring partnerships with brands where like every single month they needed me to do recipe development. They were going to pay me X amount of dollars um, and I was going to have that coming in too. So literally reaching out to brands via Instagram and being like, hello, I can help you. And then being like, okay. Um, and I also got connected to some people through friends too. So that's helpful. SEO tips. Ooh, good one. Okay. My biggest SEO tip is if you can afford it, hire an auditor. I did an audit with Casey Marquis and um, ended up helping my traffic a lot. It's like quadrupled since I had my audit with him last year. He taught me kind of like a skeleton to go through and use on your posts. So first for myself, um, I do recipe origins. So that's where the recipe is from, um, like what the influence is from the country, et cetera, et cetera. So I talk about that talk about why this recipe works or why you should make this recipe. What about this recipe is fantastic. I put that in there. I put what you need to make this recipe, including ingredients and tools. So I give background on like, if I say cornmeal, then I talk about yellow cornmeal, white cornmeal, coarse ground, fine ground, etc. I talk about all of that in there. Um, if I'm going to be using like a cast iron skillet, I link to a cast iron skillet, etc. Um, how to make this recipe. So I go through the steps right in there. Expert tips, recipe FAQs. I look up, like say today I just did a um, filet. I did like filet in a cast iron. So I Googled filet in a cast iron and it comes with that like people also ask things, you know, you can click on them and then it has the drop down and you answer the question there. I, I go through and I take note of what those questions are, what people also ask. And I put that in my FAQ section um, where I answer questions that people also ask about cooking filet because I just want to make sure that I'm being like a really helpful resource. Um, I also look up keywords that match my search volume. So I use the Hoth because it's free. It's not the best resource in the world, um, but it's, it's it helps me a lot. So I try to target three keywords in all of my posts, a small keyword. So like 200 to 800 search volume, a medium keyword that's about for my size. So I was recommended about 2,500 to 3,000. And then I target a big keyword that has like many, many thousands of searches. Um, so I do like a small, medium, large. And that way, um, maybe it won't show up as first on Google for the huge keyword, but I'll show up as first on Google for the small keyword. So I get assured traffic from that. And then um, maybe I'm on like the bottom of page one on the medium keyword. And then I can like make some tweaks, make some videos and stuff to kind of push that up to the top. What did my day look like working and blogging? How did I manage it? When I first started working and blogging, like I told you, I worked like many, many, many hours. I um, would cook on the weekends. So I would do like four recipes a day on the weekends on Saturday and Sunday because I needed daylight because I photograph with daylight. And then I would spend all of the weeknights after work working on like the computer part of my blog. Writing the post, publishing the post, researching, um, marketing, extra stuff, like all that kind of stuff. I would work a lot watching TV, so it didn't feel like working. I did take breaks. I know it sounds really intense and it was really intense and it is really intense, um, but I, I would take breaks. What do my days look like now? I just want you to keep in mind that I've only been doing this for a week. So uh, my day, what my days look like now may be totally different in a month or in six months or in a year. For now, what my days look like is my goals right now are to grow my Instagram account. Um, so I spend a lot of time making 
reels of recipe videos. I do lots of recipe testing during the day, but I think I want to go back to doing that on the weekend so I still have time for admin stuff during the day. I've been spending a lot of time like researching YouTube, how to grow my YouTube, um, making videos that you guys haven't seen yet. I do a lot of like brand emails and things like that. Um, during the week I have I really would like to grow my business through working with brands as well so um, I've set a, a quota for myself every day of how many brands I want to reach out to or um, answer or whatever um, send emails to reply to emails um, and I do that every single day too recipe development growing my Instagram via engaging on Instagram and reels working on growing my YouTube reaching out to brands and working on cooking classes that's how I spend my time I'm working on the re relaxation piece too. Uh, how do I come up with recipes? So recipe development is really fun, um, but it's also something that I have a really hard time doing um, just because there's a fine line between like appreciating a culture, wanting to post the recipe, um, but also not wanting to like plagiarize anybody else. Um, and then also trying not to change it too much that I'm like not doing justice to the culture anymore. What I do with making up recipes, I know what what country's coming up. I normally look up the national dish and a couple of other recipes that um, are popular in that country. And then I do a lot of research on those recipes. I look at like four or five different versions of that recipe, figure out the common threads, like what the common ingredients are, the common cooking methods. Then I kind of like try to do something that puts my own twist on it. So I'll make it in the instant pot or if I change anything. I say what I've changed, why I'm changing it, what you can do if you want to make it authentic. So I do all of that stuff. How exactly do I make money food blogging? So we talked about how you can make money food blogging in general. How do I make money? Um, my biggest stream is ad revenue on my website is number one. Brand work is number two. Cooking classes are number three. Hmm. I'd really like all of them to grow. I was gonna say I wanted one to grow more than the other, but no, I just want all of them to grow. What are my top five favorite countries and recipes that I've made from those countries? Hold on, I have to think about it. I loved cooking Belgium. Liege waffles, mussels, mashed potatoes, frites, all of Belgium was fantastic. I loved doing Belgium. Kabuli pulao from Afghanistan, Mwah, prime. I feel like I gotta get out my computer. Okay, let's take a look. Ooh, Denmark, Danish meatballs from Denmark, frikadeller so good we like literally ate that right out of the pan like nobody even used to play my whole family just like nommed on it out of the pan canada was fun because i did those videos with my aunt so i loved doing canada arepas from colombia prime one of my most popular recipes on pinterest people love the arepas from colombia garnaches from belize sweet rice from bahrain it's flavored with um rose water and sugar Wow, so many good options. I hope I answered your question. I don't even know how many I just named. And then keep in mind, I also do Instant Pot recipes too. So I have lots of good Instant Pot recipes that aren't from countries, but are just delicious. What advice would I give to my younger self? What would I tell myself in the past? I would just tell myself it eventually pays off. So keep going. So many times where I was like, is it going to pay off? Is all of this worth it? And it did, and it does, if you keep pursuing. I always say that my blog was a lesson in patience for me. I'm a very quick person. I like things to happen quickly. I do things quickly. Um, I like everything to unfold perfectly, beautifully, quickly, all the time. And this was not quick, but just that reassurance of like, it's gonna happen for you. Maybe not as quick as you want, but it's gonna happen for you. Would have been really good for me to hear. I think that's it. I am really happy. I'm really happy to be having the blog as my full-time job. It is a lot of stress. It is a lot of work. Um, it is a lot of wondering if you're doing everything right, wondering if you're doing anything wrong. Um, it's a lot of sleepless nights, uneasy feeling, um, but it's also like lots of freedom, lots of spending my days doing something that I love, growing my own passion knowing that I'm working towards something bigger. Eventually I would love, love, love to take the blog around the world, um, meet people, learn their stories, learn about their culture through food and share that with you guys, um, share their stories with you through food. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have more questions, just leave me a comment. I'll answer all of them. Thanks for um, encouraging me, inspiring me. Thanks for supporting me. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, subscribe here on YouTube. You can check out my recipes. You can subscribe to my email letter. I will leave all of the links to that stuff down in the description below this video. I appreciate you so much.